If you're interested in learning more about basic session logging, be sure to check out our advanced Juno security course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the course in the keyword search box. And if you're pursuing Juniper certification, take note that this appears in the Juniper Network Certified Professional Security Exam. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside of Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the basic session logging on SRX devices learning bite. So at this point you might be asking yourself, what is basic session logging? What does that mean? This means we are going to be logging sessions when they are created and closed. And so configuring this is pretty straightforward. First you need to have a security policy with the session init and or session close configuration statements. And this configuration is going to go under the then clause and also under the log statement in the security policy. Then lastly we need to configure a syslog file that uses the facility user and level info. This will capture the creation and closure messages that we're looking for. And alternatively we can use the match statement to match on certain conditions. And once we get to the example which is coming up here soon I'll show you that. Show you how valuable that can be. So here is our basic session logging example. Here on the slide, you can see that we have the SRX1 device, which is connected to server one, and then it's also connected to user one through four. And we can see the different IP addresses associated here. We have the 10.1.1.1 address with server one, and then users one through four are a part of the subnet 172.29.0.0 slash 24. And you can see in the user down below that uh, the last octet is designated to show which IP address they're using as they are a part of that subnet. So in this example, users 1 through 4 have access to server 1. And you must log session information locally for user 3. For whatever reason, we don't need to worry about the other users. We're just interested in user 3. So then we need to configure SRX1 to meet the conditions that are specified in this example. So here's the CLI for SRX1 and first I want to show you what sessions we have going. And we have some ICMP, basically ping traffic going from user 1 through 4. And let's take a look at those individual uh, source addresses. See, we have traffic coming from user 1, user 2, user 3, and user 4. And that's great. They should have access to server 1. However, we do want to log traffic from user 3 for whatever reason. Maybe we've had some problems with that user. We just want to keep track of that guy. So first we'll jump into configuration mode. We'll jump to the policies. Let's have a look at the policies. We have a global policy that is matching from the uh, hosts, uh, which is also the user's address there. Those are the hosts going to the servers and matching on any application and permitting it. That's great. So let's go ahead and configure that policy to log on session creation. Remember we have session init and we also have session closure. You know, session init is when the session is created. Session closure is when that session ends. And so right now we're just looking at logging when the session is created. We can see the configuration there. And so the next thing we need to do is we need to configure a, a syslog file. We're going to name this session tracking or you could actually as well send this to a uh, remote syslog server or some sort of syslog server that is not local to the SRX device here by specifying the actual host. The file command, file statement, means you're going to store the syslog files locally on the SRX device. With the host, you would actually specify a remote host to store those files on. But for this example, we're going to uh, oops, edit file session tracking. 
we're going to store those files uh, locally, the syslog uh, messages locally, that is. We're going to specify a facility of user and a logging level of info. So it's pretty straightforward. So let's commit that. And then we'll, after this commits, we'll go ahead and look at the actual files that are created. And we can do that by simply looking at the log file that we just configured called session tracking and yeah we got we got some stuff in there that's good but the problem is you might notice is we have a lot more stuff than we actually want uh, for example I'll do some match condition to help skinny this down we have host 4 and there's a lot of host 4 you know we have host 3 as well which is awesome we're looking for host 3 but we really don't want to get these other guys too And so what we can do in this situation is we can use the match condition, or rather the match statement to specify what we want to match on. And we can specify the source address of user 3, commit that, and we should only get user 3 in the logs for user 3. We're going to clear that log first, get rid of any stale information. That's looking a little better. If you look closely, you can see that the source address is only from user 3 in these log files. Again, we have more logs, but it's all from that 172.29.0.3 address. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we are looking for. Okay, so one last thing I do want to bring up here. I want to show you guys kind of a shortcut. Notice how we specified user facility and the level of logging as info. Well, say you're in a like a test scenario or, or scenario to where you need to do some logging quickly, but you can't remember off the top of your head what you need. You really don't want to test it to find the different facilities. And so you're really concerned like, well, I'm not quite sure what I should do here. And so you just need to log these sessions. And so what we can do here is we're just going to delete everything under here and we're going to say any any for the facility and the logging level which you know is going to grab lots of other things besides just the session creation or session closure messages and so what we can do here is notice how in the log files for these session create and session closures we have something very specific in here and one thing that's always going to be in there is going to be specific to these type of log files is called RT underscore flow and you can see that here in the previous logs and so we can match on that that match statement is incredibly powerful, it allows you to do some amazing things. So let's commit that, clear the log file, and then show it again. You can see in here we're all we're getting we're getting more than just that dot three address, the user three, but that's okay, you know, we we've already done the example. This is just a little extra to show you. But notice how it's just matching on that RT flow part of the syslog file. And so this is just a quick and dirty way if you need to get some logging done quickly and you are only supposed to log on say all the sessions that are going through and you need to do basic logging like this, basic session logging, this is a great quick and easy way to do it. It's easy to remember RT underscore flow. The facility user logging level info, not so easy to remember especially if you're under a time crunch. And so just keep that in mind, this is going to really help you out in the future. Alright, so that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we uh, discussed basic session logging, talked about how to configure it, and then talked more about the match statements and how that helps with basic session logging. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.